It is a desert landscape, but a titanic human effort is trying to transform this area in southwestern Niger. The semicircles in the sands are dikes built by locals to retain rainwater, a helping hand for trees to grow on the hostile Serimi Plateau. This is the Great Green Wall, a monumental project to hold the Sahara Desert's advance across Africa, from the Atlantic all the way to the Indian Ocean. The very first step is really just about making these structures for catching runoff water. Here, there's about 20 hectares that have been recovered and then planted on. Only very drought-resistant species can survive here, like the acacia Senegal tree. Its leaves and seeds fertilize the ground for wildlife and double up as feed for cattle. The African Union launched the Green Wall project in 2013. If all goes to plan, it will transform 100 million hectares in Africa by 2030, turning a strip of arid land of almost 8,000 kilometers green from Djibouti in the east to Senegal in the west. Niger aims to replant more than 3.5 million hectares, but it is still very far from this goal. We made a first assessment in 2020. Progress was too slow. We're talking about having reached about 8% of the end target. In the uphill struggle against desertification, Niger faces a big setback. The security threat posed by jihadist groups in the Sahel. Farmers no longer dare to venture into certain areas to rewild. It costs us a lot, not only in terms of money, but also in terms of accessibility to the areas that need work. So for the moment, our activities are concentrated in areas where we have access, but there are many areas that need this work, but we can't access because of this insecurity. At the recent UN climate talks in Scotland, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos pledged $1 billion to restore nature in Africa. Before that, the project had raised $19 billion already. The stakes are high for Niger. Its population is set to grow from 23 to 30 million in the next decade. 80% of them depend on subsistence farming. Behind this screen, a new fight for African independence is at stake. Afrogen, a Cape Town-based biotech consortium, is developing a vaccine against COVID-19 with the support of the World Health Organization. To do this, the scientists use reverse engineering. This means deriving a formula from an existing vaccine. That is considered um, R&D, so there isn't any infringement of intellectual property. Um, and, and in the process, we learn how you make mRNA, how you scale it to um, to be able to produce it at a scale that would be um, useful for clinical trials. The team is basing its research on the drug by US-based Moderna. Negotiations are underway with the pharmaceutical giant to obtain licenses for its use. The South African team hopes to produce a second generation vaccine, better adapted to the continent's climate. The aim is therefore to have a very, very super efficient and safe drug substance, but that the drug product will have a different stability and more suitable to be distributed in a temperatures which is feasible and possible for Africa. Ideally, the new vaccine could be stored in ordinary fridges. Current ones need ultra-cold temperatures. The 22 scientists are determined to meet the challenge. There's a lot that we've learned in the pandemic and, it, and it's highlighted just the inequities that, that exist. Um, but it's also given such a driving force to say, um, for Africa to say, no, we can do it. It's like we, um, there's major emerging economies, it's a growing continent and um, we can do it. If all goes to plan, Prototype shots will be ready for clinical trials within a year and then will be produced locally. Afrogen will train other companies to manufacture the vaccine across the continent. Senegalese fashion designer Ndia Diop guards the history of some remarkable women. She is one of a few who still make the outfits worn by the Signar 
powerful local women in Saint Louis and Gorée, key French trading posts on the Atlantic coast in the 18th and 19th centuries. In Saint Louis, there were events with French President Macron and Macky Sall. I made the outfits of the Seigneur that took part in them. The Seigneur were black or mixed race wives of European merchants and officers who traveled here, often to work in the slave trade. These temporary marriages lasted for the duration of the husband's stay. Upon his return to Europe, the union might dissolve. Far from being outcast as concubines, the Seigneur rose to dominate social life. The women also wore glamorous typical dresses, long silk ornaments, gold jewelry, and accessories. It's these pieces India Diop recreates in her studio. This afternoon, she asked a few students to model the outfits. After putting on the costumes, the students head for a stroll in the city center in celebration of the women who once walked the same streets. The senior outfits remind us of our ancestors. They allow us to know our history, our roots, and to better immerse ourselves in our culture. We are really proud to wear these clothes. The Seigneur would famously walk through the city late afternoon in their eye-catching outfits. Their habit became a tradition in today's festivals and celebrations. But Diop says their story is underappreciated. People are only interested in Seigneur when they hold events or inaugurations. It's on these occasions that they call me to get girls wearing Seigneur outfits. But the history doesn't interest many people anymore. Aminata Sol of Senegal's Center of Research and Documentation is another custodian of the Seigneur's unique history. She catalogues the outfits inspired by historical accounts and engravings. We forget that they were there, that women have always been there. Women played a big role, so we really need to give them their rightful place and make sure they don't just serve as a backdrop. Because right now it's just that, a backdrop, folklore. And it shouldn't be like that anymore. At the height of their influence, the Seigneur helped to bridge gaps between their European husbands and the indigenous population. Their power waned with colonization and the abolition of slavery in the 19th century. Today, these fabrics are closely guarded. Asking to borrow one of Saul's outfits can be tricky. She only grants requests to those she thinks will treat them with due respect. Thank you.